we're going to work on taking a simple melody and making it sound bluegrassy. This is the number one sort of requested topic I often get. And I'd like to work on it and show you how I work on that myself. And it's going, we're going to take the common melody, Your Love is Like Flowers. First thing we're going to do is learn the simple, simple, simple vocal melody, note for note. So I'm just going to play the chords here and, and let's just uh, sing through the melody a couple times to get it in our, uh, in our ear. So melody goes, Oh, they tell me your love is like a flower in the springtime blossom so fair in the fall wind it withers away dear and they tell me that's the way of your love again oh they tell me your love is like a flower in the uh, springtime in the springtime blossom so fair in the fall wind it withers in the fall wind it withers away Tell me that's the way. They tell me that's the way of your love. So we're going to learn this in, in uh, three or four keys, but we're starting in the key of G. We've got the melody in our head now. We want to prime our fingers to be able to find the melody notes by playing uh, the pentatonic scale associated with the key of the song. So let's start with the G pentatonic scale. From open G, that's where we want to start. Play that with me. And then from that note, G twice as high. By playing two octaves of the pentatonic scale associated with the key of the song, you're basically priming your fingers to find all the notes that you'll need for the melody. This melody has 98% notes out of the G pentatonic scale, even when you're playing over a C and a D chord. There's only one note in the entire melody that leaves it. So that's why we, that's always a good starting point. That's kind of true of most songs. Good, let's learn this melody. I'll just, uh, if you haven't heard it before, I'll demonstrate it for you. And so you can see my fingers here. I'm gonna do the first few notes. Oh, they tell me your love. Just going up the G pentatonic scale. Up and down, basically. All right, so we got, oh, they tell me your love is like a flower from A not like a flower. That's what we have so far. In the springtime blossom so fair, all G pentatonic. Again. One more time. Okay. I'm going to demonstrate really quickly. If you weren't doing learning this from a teacher, you weren't learning call and response, how I'd re recommend doing this is playing along with the vocal melody of the song. So notice I'm playing along with the vocal part, not the instrumental part. I So that's how I recommend working on melodies. Prime your fingers with pentatonic. Play along with the vocals, not the solos. The solos will kind of leave the melody a lot more often. The vocals is going to have the, the really clear melody. So that's our starting point. Let me just go over the melody one more time, call and response style. But if you're on your own, remember that that's, that's the strategy you want to use. Play that. Da-da-da. Next listen. 
Next part. Last part. So we're going to that. We leave the pentatonic scale just for one moment to play that F sharp note. Uh, but the entire rest of the melody is all G pentatonic. Cool. So we have the melody now. What do we do to change the melody? I'd like to maybe demonstrate what I'm doing um, as I'm thinking, and then we'll try it together. So I like to, first of all, I like to play along with a metronome of some sort. I'm using this one here. So first thing I think to add is um, a real strong pickup notes. Slides, double stops. is where people most often leave the melody so we're going to talk about that as well and you you don't have to stay on the melody the entire time either we're going to talk about maybe times where you could leave it but anyway let's um incorporate take this simple melody and dress it up so first thing we want to do is know that our target note is b that's the first um first beat of the solo there, in the lyrics, there are pickup notes. Oh, they tell me your love. So we can play exactly those notes. But when we're playing on fiddle, we want to make it a little bit more aggressive. Right, to kind of state, you know, this is what's important to listen to now. Yeah? Um, usually, there's more than two notes. There's usually three. Um, and it's actually not the number of notes. It's more the, the counting. So you want to go, you want to be thinking one, two, three. So the most common one is to go from um, two chord tones below and just kind of climb up the scale to that note uh, on that, that count, which I, if I'll put this on the background here. One, two, three. Or one, two, three. For that one, you usually do two up bows. One, two, three. One, two, three. So make sure you can kind of count that and do it yourself. Because if you're going to start a song, that's how you want to start it. So count with me. One, two, three. Yeah, again. One, two, three. Try this rhythm. Same uh, timing. One, two, three. You can also do the th the uh, the same rhythm starting one chord tone below. One chord tone of a G chord. So you can go. Mm, one, two, three. And then the other thing you could do is you could do target note an octave below. So a B, B is our target. Start on B and climb up the pentatonic scale. That's a real common way to start too. And that, so I think either one chord tone below, two chord tones below, or the octave below. Same timing. One, two, three. Or two two chord tones below. One, two, three. Or one chord tone below. One, two, three. 
And of course, you could also do, I think if you're gonna start above, the only time I really hear it is you starting one chord tone above. I never hear it like, or I, I just haven't heard it really done that way too often. So I think if you're gonna start above, you can go. That might happen, or I've heard that kind of happen before. are those notes um, with with uh, harmonized double stops which we'll talk about more in the future but there are your pickup notes so that's the most important part of your solo I think is nailing that when the singer sings their last word you're gonna start counting one you know like they tell me that's the way of your love two three yeah however whatever strategy you choose to use to use those leading notes you want to hear last word you start counting in your head one two three so go ahead and choose any of those pickup notes we'll do it five times together and i'm going to sing the last note or last line of the song oh they tell me that's the way of your love two three they tell me that's the way of your love two three Tell me that's the way of your love, two, three. Oh, they tell me that's the way of your love. One more time. That's the way of your love. Yeah, so there's your uh, pickup notes. That, to me, is the most important um, aspect of a solo is the, are those pickup notes. And then I think the end of the solo is also really important too. The middle, as long as you, if you, as you play something close to the melody, people are gonna be happy, you won't get lost. Of course, we can dress it up in all sorts of ways, but uh, the beginning and the end, I think are very important. So let's get to the middle, the part that doesn't matter. <laughs> now you've got your melody down. So how do we incorporate, you know, what are some ways of changing it? So the, the first thing that's the easiest is um, sliding into notes. So, so sliding into notes is not are not just grace notes. They're not just when people come from like Celtic traditions. I think they do a lot more like grace note slides because they're embellishments. But we can actually change the note to like the target note is actually B flat. Right, so it's a full kind of metered slide. If we had the timing here. Right? Uh, slide, uh, well, let's just incorporate slides in different parts of the melody, so. Let's do one there. into that note. Double D note. Alright, adding slides every, you know, basically adding slides on the chord changes. I think one thing I, I didn't mention off the bat is where the chords change is where we want to incorporate like bluegrass language. And uh, slides are one of the ways that you sound more like a bluegrass fiddler. And if you, what we did just there is adding a slide at every chord change. Now that sounded like a little bit over the top, right? Well, we're going to mix it and match it with other kind of um, musical ideas. So just think about this as a strategy to approach. Okay, whenever the chords change, I'm going to have a slide. If you don't know where the chords change, it's basically where the like big beats of the melody are essentially. But let's try that one more time, just incorporating a slide every time the chord changes. Here we go, two, three.
So sometimes I think about you can only... I remember at first I thought you could only slide into like the thirds and the fifths and stuff like that. But you can also slide into the root, like at the very end there. It's a pretty neat sound. So any note you can slide into. If you do it, if you only dress up your melody with slides, it will sound a little bit over the top. But that's a good practice strategy to kind of get yourself um, trying all of those. So... Um, uh, let's do the next sort of way of dressing up a melody, which is with double stops. Right, so double stops are another way that we can kind of incorporate you know, into our playing to sound more bluegrassy. The way that I think about adding double stops is you do have to have a little knowledge of the chords. Um, and what I do is I take whenever the chords change, whenever the chords change is where I'm going to add a double stop. So uh, for the first uh, chord change, I guess it's not a change because you're going from like G to G or whatever, but the very beginning of the solo, my melody note is B. I'm thinking, what out of a G chord can I harmonize with B? All right. And to answer that question is, or you, you'll answer that question really quickly if you've gone through my essential double stops um, kind of thing, where it gives you all the options. Um, There's like only two ways really of voicing that chord. So so it comes out of that essential double stops PDF if you want to like read through that. But anyway, that's why I can answer these questions real quick. I'm asking myself, what can I harmonize in a G chord with a B? I could do open D. I could do G. Right, let's just work on the first double stop though. So I could do open D. That's the one I, you know, as we're cooking up our own version of this, I want you to definitely use that one. Um, but also try a G. Right? Or, um, hmm. If you started down here. That's like kind of another way of doing it. But we're going to focus on one of those two. You can harmonize above as well. Um, right? But anyway, that's how I answer that question of like where am I getting these double stops? They come from, if you're if you saying, okay, I've got a B note and we're on a G chord, you could look at that row of double stops that I have written out and see which double stops have a B in it. Of course, if you also kind of practice those double stops a lot, you'll kind of find them more quickly. But anyway, there's our first double stop. So now we're on a C chord for this next one. What could we play as a double stop here? Well, we could do open G. I think this one sounds great, but it's more challenging. That's putting a C on the top. So, um, but you could also use the open G. Open G is really safe. That one's like a challenging one. That's probably the most common one there. But if that one's challenging for you, you could just do, um, you could dress that particular moment up instead of with the double stop, you can add a slide. When you're sustaining a note, well, we'll get there on the next thing. Let's, let's keep going through the double stop. So at that moment, we're changing in the springtime blossoms so fair. On spring, we're hitting the next chord change. In the, uh, Oh, they tell me your love is like a flower. 
in the spring. So in the spring, we're on a G chord, easiest, and our melody is D. Easiest way to harmonize that is with open G. Another way of harmonizing that would be with a, a unison D. But either of those are like good choices for double stops in that moment. Okay? Uh, so we have this so far. And then we're going. We have a D chord there, and our melody is A. So what can we play there? Uh, we can do open D and A. Yeah, so either um, D and A or A and A, unison. If you're more advanced, the most kind of like bluegrassy thing to do here, I think, is to go to this shape. So that's an A and a D note. It's a very Bobby Hicks thing to do. Okay, and then we're back to the melody, same as the beginning. And then we have different double stops at the end. Uh, there's an F sharp note on a D chord. Ba -da -da. Easy way to uh, to harmonize that is with an open A. And then we end on a G note over a G chord. So G and open G works. Or G and B. Um, lots of different things there. So sample, um, this might be moving you know, a little bit too quickly right now, but sample kind of uh, practice with double stops in mind might look like this. melody plus double stops, right? If we combine that with slides, right? So a little, little bit of both there. Um, and the last thing I want to mention before we leave melody is whenever you have a sustained note in vocal singing. So, oh, they tell me your love is like a flower, right? We can, of course, just hold the note, uh, you know, with one bow. But often what happens... keep yourself in the middle of the bow uh, there's this rhythm that you hear all the time with with bluegrass fiddle players and it's um da da ba da 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 ba da so let's do it on an easier spot right right on that d chord instead of just playing Springtime blossoms so fair. Instead of just holding that note, do this rhythm. Uh, da, da, ba, da. And it's down, up, down. With the timing here.
little variations of that, but that's a very important rhythm in bluegrass, particularly when you're sustaining a note. Da, da, ba, da, instead of da, becomes da, da, ba, da. Just like kind of it's in the style, it also helps your bow kind of stay in the same, same place. So, um. all right, so we've got slides, we've got this, this different way of sustaining a note. We have double stops. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is um, micro improvisations and then leaving the melody. So micro improvisations are ways of going from keeping the melody intact, but finding different ways to play the melody plus notes in between. So I like to do micro improvisations on small little ideas. So tell me your love is all I would do. So like that's one. You can try that one. Very common bluegrass language one. So becomes just a common little bluegrass lick. Two things you could do with that. If this is the idea of like instead of sustaining a note, you play a note, another note in the chord. You could do, it could be the high G, it could be a D note, it could even be an E note. All those sound really bluegrassy. <laughs> so, right? That's like a little micro improvisations on that idea. I try to just challenge myself to make like four, like three to four different uh, ways of playing that. Um, uh, next idea. Uh, there's a little micro improvisation. So it comes. version like making a B flat and said so that's kind of combining two micro improvisations right next idea in the springtime blossom so fair there's a micro improvisation just keeping the melody intact with a couple extra notes here and there this would be challenges that you you challenge yourself to do these essentially you'd be um, working on these within the context of a metronome usually to kind of keep the rhythmic groove so I, I won't give you unlimited ideas here just just to demonstrate what micro improvisation practice looks like uh, then we're back to and the last idea So those are little micro improvisations. Won't go super far into that. Just want to mention that that's another tool. The final tool I want to talk about has to do with improvisation. So this is leaving the melody. The number one time that people leave the melody is after the last note of this of the um, after the last note of the melody ends. So uh, and they tell me that's the way of your love. And typically. There's a total of eight beats between the ending of your last note and when the singer starts. So that's where, you know, fiddlers, musicians will put all these different fancy licks in, right? You can do licks that you've practiced or you can improvise licks. So let me demonstrate that. Mm -hmm. 
Right? So count, uh, if I put this on, you'll be able to, I want you to count to eight or to four twice, like one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Uh, right after I play, you know, starting on the last note that I play. Right? Let's try that a couple more times. space there da 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 lick 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 lots of made up licks lots of made up licks until you're at the end hey right it's a lot of time in, be in between the end of the solo and when the singer starts and I, I talk to people in my live classes all the time that's because in early bluegrass there was only one mic and it took time for the singer to get there and uh, they just wanted to make it kind of square and then even when like multiple mics became available that was like such a fun part of the genre that it was kept so there's a million and one ways you could think about playing improvised ideas. Um, one, or, or first of all, filling in the space, you can do stock licks that you know, like. Um, uh, like that's probably something you played or. That's a Bobby Hicks lick or whatever. You can play things that you've learned. Or you can just noodle in the key of whatever the song is in. Yeah. So it's always going to be over the home chord. So we're going to be just, this is an example of like noodling ideas. So I'll do two pentatonic ideas. You can do this with me if you want. This is G pentatonic. Again. The last idea. So that I just put a stock lick in there. That's a, that's like a chubby wise lick, I think. It's a G and a B, or G and a D, approaching from a half step. I think I do have that on a separate video called All Purpose Fiddle Licks. Um, and if I don't, I'm definitely going to record one on that one. It's a common G lick. But anyway, focusing on just G pentatonic. Those are four ideas thinking G pentatonic. Now I'll use um, G blues. This is G major blues. G blues, G major blues. Yeah. Or G minor blues. So 
that's a minor blues lick coming out of the minor blues scale. Anyway, go ahead and um, try a couple on your own, and remember that that's like a strategy that you can practice. You can play the last line of the song plus a, like eight beats of G, <laughs> G anything really. <laughs> Um, final strategy that's like a little practice tool you can take with you the final strategy I want to look at is the uh, improvising instead of playing the melody so where I hear this done most often is when we have the melody for the first half or three quarters and then it goes into improvisation before the lick. So basically instead of melody. So I'll demonstrate first playing melody three quarters of the way through and then going into improvisation. And then I'll do melody for the first half going into improv improvisation for the second half. So this is all you know up to the individual. Everybody approaches solo is different. But here's one, here's that um, changing in the third half of the song. I did there is I started improvising before that ending lick so it just felt like a lot but I also played the ending lick in terms of the phrasing so it felt like a, a lot I started the improvisation on on the fourth quarter of the song you could also do it on the second half that sounds like this I'll do that one more demonstration, second half. second half there I left and I'm using the same uh, thought process that I used for the, the the improvised licks when I was done with the melody I'm using the same thought process when I'm playing uh, when I'm starting my improvisation earlier so I'm thinking leaving the melody but I'm thinking like G blues you know uh, depending on the chord changes like there's a C chord if you start on the second half there's a C chord you have to play over so I was thinking like more, um, I was thinking more C when I was over the C chord. But anyway, the same strategies that we used for determining what we're going to play over the um, the improvised licks is what you just used those same strategies earlier <laughs> over the chords. And so that's uh, something I'd like you to just, even if you don't have a ton of experience with it, just try it with me. I'll tell you ahead of time when we're gonna start improv improvising. And even if it's just like kind of playing a G note over and over again, just give it a shot for phrasing sense. So starting with the melody, two, three. <laughs> for the last part and into the lick section. Try that two more times. Two, three. <coughs> Thank you. 
more time in that. Two, three. One more round just practicing along with me where we start improvising on the second half. Two, three. Give you the cue a little bit early. Let's try that again. Two, three. Here's where we make it out. That was an example of, you know, I tried to mix and match some of the licks I've taught in past classes there as well. The I kind of threw into the improvisation there. You know, when you're improvising, it could be a mix of improvising licks that you've practiced or mixing in new ideas or mixing and matching them all. So that is a strategy for practice, turning on a metronome or a, I prefer a drum beat. I'm using a train beat on YouTube or I have an app that I use called Drum Genius and I look for the Orange Blossom Special Beat. <laughs> That's kind of like the basic bluegrass feel. And just in review of all the strategies that we worked on, we listened to the song, played along with the melody portion of the song that the sing singer is singing, not what the instrumentalist is playing. So we're learning the very basic melody in its core. That was the first thing we did, playing along with the song, learning the melody note for note. Second thing we did is we worked on pickup notes, making them sound like you're really like in charge, right? So we, we talked about starting, knowing what your target note is, starting at um, a chord tone below, two chord tone below, or the octave below, or one chord tone above. And that always starts on the end of three. One, so like the last word, tell me that's the way of your love, two, three, bum, ba, ba, dum, bum, yeah. Uh, once we moved away from the starting notes, we talked about when the chords change is like the most important part to add bluegrass language. We can do add bluegrass language by sliding into the target notes, harmonizing them, uh, playing, you know, double stops and things like that. Or when we're sustaining, we do that rhythm. Bum, ba, da, dum. And then we talked about um, when you finish the last note of the solo, kind of improvising some extra licks that have nothing to do with the melody. That could be based on G pentatonic. It's the home, you want to base those licks on the home scale. So what whatever key the song is in. G pentatonic licks, G major, G minor, like all that sorts of stuff. Or licks that you've practiced, you can put them in there. Finally, we talked about leaving the melody, which most often happens if people did choose to leave the melody, uh, usually leaving the melody at this uh, last quarter before the licks or the uh, halfway point. So if you listen to solos, pay attention to where you where you feel like, like they're leaving the melody if they really start strong. And of course, there's other people that improvise the entire time and don't even quote the melody. But the majority of bluegrass players do play melody. So hopefully you can use those skills along with a train beat or some sort of metronome to practice a simple melody and make it sound more bluegrassy. Good luck with that.